Hey gang, Scott here. I got a photo blending video for you today where we'll take a sequence of photos of the same scene where different things are happening in different spots of the frame and combine them all together into a single photo using Photo Raw. And this is something I do with my Seascape photos often, so you're going to see a Seascape example here. But the same principle applies to any dynamic scene where different bits of action are happening in different places and not all at the same time so you couldn't get everything to happen in the one frame just before we dive in if you are interested in adding photo raw to your toolkit or any of the other on one tools check the show notes there's an offer code down there will save you 20 percent saves you money gives me a little bit of extra support at no extra cost to you and lets me do more videos like this so uh, so let's get into this blending video here so we are going to take these four photos and use layers to combine things into a single composite. You can see there's different things happening in different areas of each of the frames. It's the same scene, but you know the ocean's moving around, the mist is changing, that sort of stuff. And I want to take the best parts of each of these and corral them into a composite. Now, a key thing when you're doing this type of, uh, you're setting yourself up for this technique in the field is you've either planted your tripod and you're taking, you know, a series of photos over the course of a few minutes, you know, or you're doing something where you're handheld and maybe you're capturing a few frames uh, in relative rapid succession. So your, your framing and your composition isn't changing too much. The delta would be whether or not you need to do an align layers. Here, I was capturing these scenes on a tripod, so I won't have to do any alignment. But what am I ultimately after? Let's answer that question before we dive into the technique. Like uh, this photo here has a lot of what I want for it. I've got this nice splash here. I got some good action on these rocks over here. This part's a little bit messy. And when I look at the one to its left, this amount of spills over this piece of the rock that is much nicer. So I want like, you know, this nice little waterfall action here. And then I look at this empty space here. I want this bit right here. I want that over here. And you know, what else is going on? Then we look in the background and I see here, there's some cool mist. I would like that to be here. And maybe this little bit of mist, I would like that to be up here. And so this is the, like the mental accounting you're doing with the sequence of photos. Say, what are the, what are the elements that I want to have in the photo that I, in the composite that I'm going to create. So with that in mind, let's get these into layers. So to get them into layers, I'm just going to select all of them. So I'm going to click on the first one, shift click to get the last one, go over to more here and then say merge to layers. This will combine the photos into a single layer stack. Sounds great. Now merge is a little bit of a, a misnomer. It's not going to take all the photos and squash them down and actually merge the layers. It's going to take all those photos and build me a layered document. And then I can work with each of the layers. I don't have to go and manually add each layer after having been in the edit module. So let photo raw finish that off and we'll get going. And these photos are all loaded into layers and I look at my layers pane and there are my four images. The first thing I do is just a little bookkeeping here. So this top image, you know, what is the piece that I want? Really, it's the mist in the upper left. So I'm just going to name this layer mist upper left and then turn it off so it's invisible. Okay. Uh, the next one, this is the photo that has like my, uh, like my middle waterfall. And so I'll call that one middle waterfall. And again, once I've named it, just turn it off. Next one down, uh, this has most of what I want, right? This is the splash, this side is good. So this is the base. This is really what I want for most of the photo. So I always call that my base. I'll turn that off for a moment. And then finally, we have, this has got mist up here that's good, and this has got the waterfalls on the right. So let's just call this one waterfall. Well, I guess it be consistent, right waterfall, and then, you know, mist upper left. Now I want to take the portions of the right waterfall, the middle waterfall, this upper mist, and I want to lay those down and make those visible for my base layer. My preferred approach is I like to take the base layer, put it on the bottom of my layer stack, and then for each one of the layers above it, 
enable it, invert the mask so I'm hiding everything, and then do a little bit of masking to reveal the portions that I want. So I'll, I'll, I'll mask with a, with a white painting brush to, uh, to have things reveal. So let's get started with that. We'll take the base layer and drag that down to the bottom and turn off my right waterfall. So the only thing visible right now is the base. Now the next bits will do the masking on each one of these particular layers. And when you're working with masking and layers, it's important to make sure you have the layer you want to work on selected. So I will select the first layer. This has the right waterfall and the mist in the upper left. I'll turn this on. Then we see that mist show up. We see this waterfall here. Click the masking icon. And let's move my masking panel right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is invert the mask. So I'm hiding everything. Even though both layers are visible or enabled, the only thing I can see is the base layer because the mask on my upper layer is pure black. Now I have my brush, right? I'm going to paint in. So I want to choose paint. And the first thing I'll paint over is this area here. And so you can see I'm revealing by, by painting in with the white mask, I'm revealing the waterfalls that are on this part of the layer. And here is kind of like, you know, it's just depends on how much or how little you want. You get a good blend. That feels pretty good. I'll usually check it with a toggle before and after. And, you know, maybe here I got too much erase. Fade that out a little bit. And let me shave that right off there. That's a pretty nice masking blend. So what made that masking so easy is that the tripod was fixed. I'm capturing the same scene again and again. The lighting's really not changing. You know, again, if, if this were not on a tripod, I would need to do an align layers in the layers pane, but that's what made this masking part so simple. And now we're gonna repeat this for the other layers. This is where it's nice having this, uh, this little panel here because as I move up to the next layer, the middle waterfall, I'll select that layer and turn it on. We're going to hide everything we saw, but there's that middle waterfall that we want right, right there, right? Off, on. So we'll click the mask. The masking tool will show up. I invert the mask. Make sure I'm in paint mode. So I'm going to be painting a white mask to reveal the waterfall. And I'm just going to go nudging through here nudging through there, and maybe to, uh, to smooth things out, I'll lower the opacity of that brush a little bit as I kind of get around the base there, just to smooth that in, and maybe something like that. Okay, so now I have that. I can make sure I've got all the, the water at the top. This part, the brush strokes can be quite messy, but you know, to see what this mask looks like, you know, the mask itself is kind of uh, it's sloppy, but what's, what's wonderful is the scene isn't changing. I'm just revealing pixels and you know this rock is still dark and wet and now I'm just getting the water to show up. Now, uh, I realize I forgot something on my previous layer. Um, on the previous layer, the right waterfall with the mist, forgot to, uh, to do that. So let's go back down to this right waterfall where we have the mist up in this area here, right? So I'll click that masking icon that loads my masking tools, paint in, put the opacity back up at 100%, and that mist was somewhere up in here, right? So I'm just kind of painting through, wiggling around a little bit. The trees haven't changed, and the mist is just kind of being revealed, right? I'm showing the mist on this layer, and that's looking great. We'll finish it off with our top layer. Click the top layer, Turn it on. And what do we have here? We have basically this extra mist up there. Let's go ahead and bring some of it in. Click that layer again. Invert the mask to hide everything. So I'm, I'm seeing what's beneath on the layer stack. Paint in and just kind of over here. Whoops, I need to enable that layer, don't I? 
There we go. Paint in and just reveal a little bit more of that mist. Now that brush stroke to me got a little too aggressive. I was a little sloppy on that. Undo because I don't want to, let me go undo all the way. What I noticed is when I came in here, I introduced some brightness into the trees. I don't want that. I just want to have the, uh, enable that. Let's do this. Let me get back to that. Reset the mask, invert the mask. Okay, we're pure black. What I noticed is when I was painting in, I brought too much brightness into that hillside. So I'll be a little more careful with my brush stroke just to bring in the mist that's right there. And then I can do my, my same kind of lower the opacity just to smooth out the edge there a little bit. Bring a little more atmosphere in there. So then the sum total, we'll close that out. I'll hit my Z key, so I'm back with uh, just the zoom tool. We'll see how we built this up. Here's the base layer. This is the only thing that's visible right now. We have this next layer up. When I turn that on, you can see the mask like this, revealing only the pixels here and here to bring in those accents. The third one up brought this little bit in, and then finally added just a little more of that mist accent up there. And so this is the net result. And then my last steps will be to take the layers, put them into a new stamped layer, and any additional style I want to add, I'll do on the composite, where I have all of the pixels from all the different layers visible in a single layer where I can do effects or any retouches or things like that I might have to do to finish up the image. But I wanted to cover the blending part of it with you in this video. I hope you found it uh, useful, interesting. Got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.